Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at an unusual item. Again, this is filmed at the Airborne Assault Museum, so it will be airborne related. This is a V-43, and what is referred to in British Army terminology at the time as a machine carbine, what we would now know as a submachine gun. And it was a prototype, the V-43 itself, a prototype intended for use by airborne forces, not adopted. Um, this particular example actually made for Browning himself, General Browning himself, so an interesting item from that point of view. So we'll get into the video now and have a look at this in a bit more detail. Okay, so what we have here is a very unusual, uh, rare firearm, sadly deactivated, but it is what it is. This is a V-43 machine carbine. Uh, this is there's a series of these, the V-41, the V-42 and the V-43, which is what we have here. This particular example is very interesting. Um, it's the adaption of the design for airborne use, and in fact has on the receiver here, or on the magazine well rather, um, to Lieutenant, Lieutenant General uh, FAM Browning, CB DSO from VAP Holdings Limited, which is the manufacturer. So it's actually uh, stamped into the magazine well here. This was made for, for Browning. And it was intention that this would be the, the well, one of the small arms used by uh, British Airborne Forces. Of course, that didn't uh, turn out to be the case, but uh, it was an early uh, thought of when uh, British Airborne Forces were being developed uh, and the uh, uniform and equipment and so forth were being developed for them. This was one of the weapons that was considered uh, to equip them. Very interesting design. Uh, it's a fairly standard uh, submachine gun of the time period, of course, the machine carbine in British terminology. The magazine holds 9mm parabellum, uh, two stacks, uh, one in front of the other, so, which is why it is so wide. Um, a clever mechanism inside means that it feeds from one stack and then the other. Uh, so quite a, a quite an interesting piece of the design there, holds 60 rounds in total, so quite a good uh, load, but it fired between 900 and 1000 rounds a minute, so you get through that pretty quickly. Um, we've got adjustable sights here, which we'll get a close-up of in just a moment. Spike bayonet at the front with a cruciform blade, and this actually, you, to remove this, you, you take it off the muzzle and you reverse it as a hole. Uh, in the bottom of the foresight there and it actually sits on top of the, uh, the barrel shroud there at the front. Just turn this round here. We can see on the magazine well there, we'll get a close-up of this machine carbine V43, uh, calibre 9mm, and then the uh, patents applied for beneath that. The fire selector here, um, automatic safe and, and uh, fire there, the trigger down here, and the buttstock obviously is, is wooden with a shaped grip here, you don't have a separate pistol grip. This is easily removed, it's on a bayonet sort of fitting or an interrupted screw. You can see there, it literally just slots in like that. So quite simple to disassemble and again, very important for airborne forces in terms of disassembling it uh, and dropping it uh, in a more compact package. Fix for a sling, we have a, a loop in the, the butt plate there and we have another swing swivel at the front there as well, as you can see there. So uh, quite an interesting weapon and uh, as I say, I believe this is unique uh, for, a v uh, for a V43, uh, but we'll get it, let's say, have a look at uh, some of the details in close up now. You can see here the stamping on the magazine well on the right hand side of the weapon. You can see here the designation and so forth on the left hand side of the magazine well. I'll just show you detail of the magazine here. We remove this. You can see their double stack. Uh, one in front of the other, very unusual design. Um, this fits neatly, neatly in there. On the underside of the stock here, you can see we have a, a little brass insert, and this has F A M, what's worn away a little bit here, but B, which of course is General Browning's initials, actually worked into a little brass plate there on the uh, on the lower side of the butt. Quite an interesting little feature. You can see details of the back sight here. A simple flip up sight with different. Uh, measurement. So we start with 100 there, you can see 200, 300, and then back side down. So put that back up like that. So yes, a very interesting weapon. Unfortunately I can't, can't cock the bolt or anything because it is deactivated, but nevertheless a very interesting design of machine carbine from the, the early war period, obviously not actually adopted. So there we are, that was a look at the V43 machine carbine. A very interesting weapon, obviously a prototype intended for airborne forces but never actually procured. The airborne forces of course were going to use the Sten in various marks, notably the Mark V. But nevertheless the V43, an interesting chapter in the development of Britain's airborne forces and at a time when various 
uh, weapons and sets of equipment and even uniform were being considered uh, to give them an individual identity and to serve in the airborne role, which was a very specialised role, of course. I found it very interesting having a look, and I want to say a big thank you again to Airborne Assault, to John, the curator, for giving the opportunity to have a, a detailed look at this, take it out of the cabinet, and obviously I hope you found it interesting as well, taking a look at it in this video. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That, of course, will alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my videos and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both a PayPal and a Patreon link down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. There's also social media for the channel as well. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. And if you want to make contact but you don't really use social media, there's also an email address down there as well. But that's everything I wanted to cover in this video, I think. So until next time, bye for now.